All right, as of right now, 10.30 Eastern time, I am sending it over to our own Edward Lawrence. Sir, it is yours. Uh, thank you, Stu. I appreciate it. Yeah, and joining us now, very special guest at this moment, uh, the Dallas Federal Reserve President Robert Kaplan. He's co-hosting a conference right now. It's uh, Energy and the Economy uh, Changing or Charting the Course Ahead. Now, before we get to the energy sector, I wanted to ask you your impressions of the job numbers that just came out. Uh, 201,000 jobs created in August, better than expectations. Uh, how does this change your view of the economy? It's probably consistent with my view of the economy. It's a very strong report. It's reflective of a strong economy in 2018, a tight job market. And the number I like to look at in particular is this referred to in the lingo as U6, which is the unemployed plus discouraged workers plus people working part time who'd like to work full time. That's 7.4%, higher than the unemployment rate but it's well past its pre-recession low. Suggests to me we've got a, a strong economy and a tight labor market. Yeah, and that number ticked down uh, uh, 0.1 uh, from month to month. Now, but look at the average hourly wages. They've gone up 2.9% uh, year over year. Yeah. Uh, does that cause inflationary concerns for you? I, I, we've been expecting, and I've been expecting for several months now that you'd see the wage number firming. And it's consistent with a tight labor market. Uh, I, I, I still believe that a lot of the big structural drivers in the world, automation, globalization, will mute uh, overall inflation pressures. But I actually think the wage growth number is welcome and, uh, and is, is probably consistent with our, our outlook for the economy and what it's been the last few months. So does this change, you, there's an FOMC meeting coming up in September, does this change what you believe should happen in terms of rate hikes? The market's already priced one in this time around. Uh, do you think that should continue? And then what about December? Yeah, no, and I've been saying uh, that I believe in light of economic performance, we ought to be moving toward neutral, a rate at which we're neither stimulative or restrictive at the Fed. Uh, because we're at, we're at or near full employment or past it. Uh, we're meeting our 2% inflation goal. And it, the, the neutral rate's a theoretical term, but uh, it, it ranges, um, in our judgment at the Dallas Fed, around a band of two and a half and two and three quarters. That tells me that over the next nine to 12 months, we ought to be raising the Fed funds rate uh, probably at least three more times, maybe three or four times to get to that neutral rate of around two and a half to two and three quarters. And everything that is in this jobs report today just causes me to reaffirm, reaffirm that view. And because of the, the trade headwinds possibly, or what the Fed is watching there, do you think there should be a pause in that two to three that you're talking about well, rate hikes? N no, I, I listen, uh, I, I think if, if you just stopped here uh, the trade tensions, while they've affected a number of different industries, and I can tell you firsthand talking to CEOs, having some chilling effect on capital expenditure plans, I think it's not yet having a material effect on economic growth overall, even though it affects certain industries. Uh, I do think it may be an, a factor that's affecting emerging market instability, so I'm watching that carefully. But, uh, but, but I, I, I think trade tensions at this point are just something I'm watching carefully, but at this point, I don't think it should change uh, our plans at the Fed. Are you seeing companies take a wait and see? You have 50 Fortune 500 companies in your in your district. Are you seeing them take a wait and see attitude for capital improvements coming in investments? It, it's listen. The tax legislation and tax reform caused companies to accelerate. I think capex that they might have done a year or two from now to do it today because of the tax incentives. I also think you're seeing uh, uh, additional capex in the energy business because of uh, uh, the production growth, high prices. Uh, but I do think co companies are telling me that they're, they, yes, they are taking a wait and see approach uh, because of the uncertainty around trade. So it's having a little bit of a chilling effect. Uh, and, uh, and, and so uh, that's something just to be aware of and take note of. And just quickly, in the last 30 seconds, does that push the stimulus, the effect of the stimulus off when those companies do finally uh, release that capital investments, when they feel secure that trade disputes have been settled? Well, uh, I think you'll get more, maybe more bang for the buck from the fiscal stimulus if companies 
didn't have this uncertainty. It is our view, and it's my view at the Dallas Fed, that we're at the height of the impact of the stimulus right now, the fiscal stimulus. That will fade somewhat in 19. It will fade further in 20. And you've still got some headwinds, sluggish uh, uh, labor force growth because of demographics aging, and sluggish productivity. Those will start to kick in more as the fiscal stimulus fades. And th that's something I'm watching very closely. And Robert Kaplan, I appreciate it. Uh, if you want to continue with Varney and Company, watch it right here. You can also two screen us. Fire up your computer, watch us over. We're going to continue this conversation on foxbusiness.com. Stu, I'll go back to you. Oh, continue away. Thank you very much, Ed Lawrence, and good stuff, Mr. Kaplan. We appreciate it. Thank